Hey guys, welcome back to Home Boot, and this week I am back onto the front end of the Al Ferrari and hopefully we can mount up the radiator. Alright guys, um, today we're getting back in and trying to fabricate up some mounts for the radiator to see how we go sort of making up the bottom end of this, uh, this lower rail underneath behind here. Um, before I get into it, I just want to cover a couple of the things that keep coming up in the uh, in the questions. I have mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again for those who obviously didn't get it the first time and the second time. Uh, I can't easily make this front end removable. I know lots of people were, were asking that. On the Alpha 105s, this front guard and this front panel, this is whole front nose cone is all welded together one piece onto the body. To make this front end removable would mean I'd basically have to remove these guards, remove this nose cone, make a frame to hold it, and then reinforce the shell underneath because a lot of the structure is the fact that it is all welded together. It would be an absolute nightmare. It would work probably if I had all carbon fiber or fiberglass parts at the front, but um, that's expensive and nothing I've seen in that sort of stuff fits very well at the moment. Uh, and basically it, uh, it's just not what I'm going to do because it's just it's not the way I'm going with this. This is going to get stay all steel. I want to keep it steel. I don't want to mess around with that stuff. So this is the way to go. Uh, and I'm just going to have to lift the engine in there at the top like, uh, uh, like normal. So, all right, continuing on. Let's uh, get down here and uh, see what we need to do about uh, reinforcing this lower bar. All right, so um, you might have seen then that I actually uh, cut out this corner of this piece because I was standing back and looking at my um, my layout. My my top bar here is actually quite level. It's nice and nice and even. Again, I'm working off of my floor, which is even on both sides of the car, um, within about a millimeter, and this is within a millimeter. So I'm using the um, the floor as my level. It's not. 100% perfect, but it's pretty close. This is this is nice and uh, even. This was out by five millimeters or so. This bottom corner, again, because this corner was hit, um, it was twisted and it wasn't in the right spot. So I just cut it out and re-welded it again. So this is now nice and level and even as well, uh, and they match in, so that looks good. My next step is to actually mount in this lower section. Now, um, I believe the. Uh, the sway bar mounts into this and there are captive nuts in here. They're not central at the moment and what I'm thinking is I'm going to use this piece uh, like I mentioned in the past because uh, standard this is just two bits of sheet metal that just fold together and just spot weld together. This is going to be a fair bit stronger so I'm going to reuse this but I may end up cutting out and remaking a little panel with the, um, the captive nuts in it because I'm uh, uh, I don't like where these are, but I can do that at a later date. I can do the sway bar and stuff when I've got the rest of the suspension components in. Can get everything square and level and in the right spot then. Um, for now, I just need to line this up, but putting this in is important to get it in the right spot to match up with the lower lip of the front bar because um, basically when this, this panel goes in there, I'm going to have to make a sheet that comes down and, and across, and that spot welds along to this bottom edge here. So um, I'll show you a bit more detail when we get closer to that, but that is, uh, that's the next part, is sort of getting the right height for this piece so that it all lines up and then the front bar can go on and be nice and square and straight and even. So um, let's start mounting this bit up.
All right, so um, I've tidied everything up now and got this, uh, this lower square tubing piece in here um, loosely where I wanted it. And I made up this connection piece. So basically what this is, this is just a, uh, just a piece, strip of uh, sheet steel that I've made up that I'm going to actually weld onto here, something like this, because this lower edge um, will actually weld onto the bottom of the nose cone. So that's the way I'm gonna sort of lay it all out. So now it's time to make sure this is perfectly even, weld this lower bar in, and then um, I'll show you how I'm gonna try and get it all lined up and uh, get it on the car. Alright, so this lower piece is now welded all in and it's uh, nice and solid so I've got a good structure down the bottom of the car. Like you saw, I made up this panel here. This is going to go on here like so. The way I'm going to line it all up is I'm going to get the nose cone back on the car, sit this in place, clamp it with some uh, vice grips onto the lower lip of the, uh, the nose cone uh, and then I can tack weld this on, undo the clamps, can take the nose cone off and this can then be weld it up when I'm ready to fit the nose cone permanently, but it'll be there in place, ready to go, so I can uh, move forward on other things like radiator mounts. I am very happy with that. That's, uh, that's come together really, really nicely. That's all gonna start fitting up really well now. Um, not entirely finished down there, but um, at least I've got the, uh, the main structure in there to actually uh, line up this whole front end, which is great. Um, the next thing I'm gonna tackle now is going back to what I was doing last week, and let's see if we can actually mount in the, uh, the radiator somewhere where it's actually going to um, sit and, uh, and be clear and then maybe build some structure around it. Okay, so what you saw me do there is I, I made up a couple of little mounting boxes with some captive nuts inside to, um, this is to mount the radiator. So this is for the lower radiator mounts. Basically what I'm gonna do, uh, I needed standoffs because the, um, these mounts do not mount straight up to this lower panel down here. I needed to space them off. So uh, I worked it out, I needed about 20 mil. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna sit the radiator roughly in the right spot and then I can weld these mounts actually onto the car. I'll be able to bolt and unbolt the, uh, uh, these are just standard uh, Subaru BRZ radiator um, support, so I'll be able to, you know, 
replace them or do whatever, bolt on, bolt off as, as need be in the future. So uh, let's put this on the car. So um, that has turned out really nice. Uh, basically, as you saw here, I built these two little boxes. They're all nicely, completely welded on. They are really, really solid now. Uh, they're gonna make fantastic little mounts for the, uh, the radiator bracket. So the radiator can just go on straight onto these, nice and neat and tidy uh, with the perfect standoff distance. One of the issues I have is obviously you probably can't put the top on properly until uh, the whole front is welded on. But at least the bottom part is done, which means I can uh, sort of move forward in buttoning up and closing up the front end of this car because until then there was, there was nothing I could do. So I'll bolt these on now and uh, we'll have a look at where we move from here because I really don't know at this stage. All right, so now the radiator is uh, is here and it's mounted, I'm sort of working out what I'm gonna do with the bottom half of this. So as I mentioned earlier, the below these pieces, there was a, a panel that went backwards like that and then met up with this back rail back in here on both sides. I've cut it off of here and obviously, cause it's not gonna fit. I'm just trying to work out now how to sort of restructure these areas um, and, and make them work and uh, I'm sort of thinking that I might actually build like a triangular um, bent piece that goes from up here down to these lower corners on both sides and it'll just give it a little bit extra, uh, a little bit of extra structure. So uh, let's get to uh, folding up and uh, building those bits. that's much stronger. I know they're not symmetrical, but they weren't symmetrical in the first place, so I'm not overly concerned about it. They're not going to be seen from the front or uh, anything anyway. Um, it'll have the radiator in it from blocking it from the engine bay, so it's just more about giving it a little bit more structure so that it's not just this flimsy piece uh, flopping in the wind. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it's time to move on to something else. Okay, so the front of this is starting to look really nice and neat and tidy and the, uh, the basically the under the skin stuff is pretty close to done. This is all pretty much uh, what I need now. So uh, before I can actually mount the front nose cone on properly. One of the last things I need to do, and it also will help with uh, lining the nose cone up, is actually mounting up the other bumper mount bracket. So uh, I've got the old bracket here that's uh, sort of been welded onto this mangled piece of botched and <laughs> bodged metal. Um, but the bumper bracket itself, they're quite uh, a robust, solid piece, so uh, I can cut this out and reuse this piece and I'm gonna go off of the one that I've got on the, uh, the driver's side already that's, uh, that's already in the right spot. So I'm gonna measure from that to uh, work out where this one needs to go. So then I can get it all lined up and get the bumper and the, uh, the nose cone on in the exact right spot. So, um, all right, let's uh, start trimming this up and measuring and mounting.
All right, so the uh, the front end is on. This uh, bumper mount is all lined up nicely, but um, to get it all lined up with the guards, I really need to lift this nose cone up. I've looked at fitting these headlight rings, but I don't want to fix them into place now because then I won't have room to sort of flex this, uh, this nose cone into place once they're solid. So it's just a matter of juggling now and working out how I get the nose cone lined up with the headlights, with the bonnet. Um, just getting it all in the same spot so that it, um, I can get ready to start welding it all together. So um, yeah, I'm uh, going to have a bit of a think about that and I think that's probably a good place to leave it. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1965, Alfa Romeo's racing arm, Auto Delta, set about to build an all new mid-engined race car. This was to replace the highly successful TZ and TZ2s. The Tipo 33 prototype was first revealed in 1967 with Auto Delta's new 2-litre V8. It had twin cam and twin spark heads and it made 270 horsepower at 9600 RPM. It featured a simple large diameter tube frame made of three tubes in a long H shape with more conventional cross members at each end. These cars are known for their large central air scoop or periscope and as such got the nickname Periscopica. It made a victorious debut at the Fleuron Hill Climb in Belgium, but failed to impress in other international events and gained a reputation as being fragile and unreliable. In total, only five or six of these periscopicas were ever built. All right, I'm really happy with the progress this week. Um, I am actually thinking that next week I should even be able to hopefully weld on the whole nose cone of the car and actually have the whole front end buttoned up. That would be amazing. Amazing. Fingers crossed. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And um, there's Patreon, Facebook, Instagram. You know how it works. You know the drill. All right, guys. All right, guys. Thanks. See you Thanks next soon. week. Auto. It was Auto Doubters. It featured a large, simple diameter tube frame. What's a simple diameter? Just a straightforward one. Couple of you got it right. I'm so surprised. <laughs> it's got their nickname from this. <laughs> <laughs> Victorious debut at the Fleuron Hill.